Survivor News. 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 Dot dot dot. And we're back covering Survivor Season 46, Episode 7 with your Survivor News. We're super excited. Uh, an exciting episode. We're joined here by Survivor Season 43, James Jones. Welcome back to the podcast. How are you? Yo, I'm doing well. Excited to be here. Um, I'm glad y'all recovered from a, 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 a very well-viewed event, an attended event yesterday in, in, Dal- in uh, I believe it was Dallas. I was uh, very sad not to be there, but it looked like it was a lot of fun and happy to talk about this episode of Survivor. Yes, we're happy to have you. I think it's uh, you have a lot of relevance to an episode like this episode. We have Jack Jones from Survivor, from Survivor of the Circle Season 2. Jack, how are you? Jack Jones is in the building. Wow. <laughs> Jack Jones. <laughs> Yeehaw. And of course, we've got Wendeezy, the winner of Ghost Island. Wendell, welcome back. How is Dallas? It's great to be here in Dallas. Uh, great city. Happy to be back on Survivor News. Let's go. Yes. Shout out to Dallas. We had a great time in Dallas, a great turnout. Everyone that showed up and showed out, it was an amazing time. Dallas definitely showed out. We definitely have to come back. Uh, It was a super fun and amazing episode to watch, especially in Dallas. Uh, So yeah, Jack, take it away. What you got for this episode? Jack. <laughs> Jack look real sassy when he's, when he's like that. Like Frozen Jack is real like he's about to get some takes. He looks like a meme or something. Yeah, Frozen Jack is about to get some takes. He has attitude. He's focused. Um, the cowboy yeah. hat is doing his thing. Um, <laughs> what is he thinking right now? I don't know. I feel like he's like... thinking he's frozen. <laughs> Jack is mustard know? right now. Am I good? <laughs> All right. So, yeah, you are bad. I don't know why. Yeah, I was like, there's so much, so much happened in the episode. <laughs> I froze up a little bit, but um, oh, am I? Am I You're a little fuzzy, so, though. This episode, fuzzy, I mean, man, right? I'm, I'm. Are you? Yeah, I mean, what an episode! Uh, I'm sure Dallas was lively. I could go as far to say I think this might have been the best episode of the season. Some might, some might even say the best episode of the new era. <laughs> um, <laughs> who might say that? It rhymes with who? <laughs> <laughs> Is it uh, a letter? It might be Q U E U E Q. But yeah, it was a, it was a really fun episode. And despite the fact that I personally am not a fan necessarily of these split tribals after the merge. It's still delivered um, and things started off hot. We get back to camp after Mariah has been voted out and we have Venus immediately going to accuse Soda of being the one to vote for her and really kind of staunchly standing by this position. I believe she was even like, nobody else would make it. It wouldn't make sense for anybody else to vote for me, <laughs> even though she was running up and down the beach saying Charlie's name all episode. Uh, and I mean, what did we think about Venus coming back to camp? with this attitude. It's Venus. Uh, Venus she's, Venus. she's playing her own game, you know, yeah. and, you know, I think that's the thing that happens that we're able to see is that everybody out there is playing their own game in their own mind because you really can't trust each other. So trust what you're seeing out there. So like your point of view is the primary point of view. So if you feel like, you know, this is what your view on the game, you're going to act upon that. Whether you're right or wrong, that's where you sit back here on the couch and the edit pops in and you see, okay, about these situations, how right was I? How wrong was I? Like, because the, the camera, the cam- what they show doesn't lie. The context may be different, but what they show you saying and what you show you thinking at the moment is what you were like saying and thinking at the moment. And whether that was right or not, you have to wait until you sit on the couch to see if your intuition is correct. And in this case, this episode, a lot of the intuitions were off a tad, you know, bit. That's what I mean. But that's the game. But they actually gave you an inside look at someone that may be on the bottom and they're playing the game and how the mindset looks for them. 
And maybe that's why they're on the bottom compared to somebody else who's looking at the game differently. Like I think her just opposed to Charlie is was really good this episode. But we'll get into that. But I also think I, I don't fault Venus because I feel like when you're on a tribe with someone and you stop communicating with them and you don't really strategize with them. When it comes time to actually strategize with them, uh, you can't fault Venus for being not trusting of soda. But I don't agree with like the spectacle to make it in front of the camp and really kind of like display your cards of how fractured you guys actually are, even though mm -hmm. Venus kind of tells everyone. But it was interesting. I think um, Venus is an Oh, go ahead. I think no, Venus I is a I just want to say, I think she's a very interesting character and I am willing to bet almost anything that we will get some kind of a flashback or some kind of a montage to tell us where she comes from. And that will inform us about a lot of things and, and how she's been playing the game. Um, I was listening to the on fire podcast earlier today, as I, I listen to all the pods, you know, and Jeff just mentioned how, like, how she comes, like how she's like, a big feminist and i believe she's um i believe her, her parents lived in iran or something and she used to live there and like she fights for women's rights over there among other very noble causes that she fights for and i have i'm like this very young woman who's out here and i guess in real life doesn't take no for an answer and fights and speaks up and speaks her mind no matter what now she gets on this show and you have a lot of older people kind of saying what to do. And granted, when I looked at Venus's game, I'm like, ah, you shouldn't do this, sis. Ah, you might want to, your, your tone, oh, you might want to, you know. But I don't know the path that she's walked, you know. So I'm willing to bet that we're going to see something that kind of like changes our perspective a little bit. So I agree with that. But then also the, you're playing the game to get along with people, right? So what you've been through, we all have been through things, right? So like we all bring our own personal good stuff, bad stuff to the table when we're in the, when we're in the game. So like, yes, like you're fighting for like, that's great. However, when you have someone like Maria saying, hey, you're backing me into a corner, right? That's that's not like, like you can be feisty, but that also comes down to communication. I think those are two separate things. Now, I don't I don't think there's a right and wrong way to play the game. So, like the fact that she is there and she out and she's outlasting is right. The way she's playing the game is right for her. You have to figure out what's right for your game. I know I cannot play that type of game. I you know, and you have the luxury when you are younger, you take advantage of the things that you have. If you're older, like a gay bird, you can act aloof, you can act this. With her being younger, she can lean into being younger, being lean, lean into being exuberant, lean into saying, I did this, oh, I didn't know, and bringing it back. So we may not be seeing those teachable moments where people do like to take younger people under their wing to give them advice and stuff. So there may be more stuff we're not seeing, but you know, relating to people is a crux of the game, no matter what, where you come from. I think you it's know. absolute. I think it's an absolute necessity in the game. I think. I think there are times you have to humble yourself. There are times you have to hold your tongue. This is a good winning strategy. Strategy, generally speaking, but I also think that depending on where you come from, you might not have certain tools in your tool belt. When, like, and in in her case, I just I just think she came out there to be this strong willed. I'm not listening to anybody. This is how I'm playing the game type of person. And granted, that might not get you votes at the end, but that might get you to the end. But what's the difference in a Boston Rob's gameplay? Uh, similar to Venus. Like, he doesn't take no for an answer. He kind of like go like. Strong disagree. I strong disagree. Um, I, I feel like there are a lot of people that play that way. Although I don't always agree with her takes, but like. Uh, how many I, times has Rob played? Like Four young five. Buster Rob was like this too, though. But I'm not. I'm, I'm, won. I'm just saying. Hey, winning is a factor of luck winner over there too, and skill. Luck and skill, right? For sure. Right? No, nothing. nothing is, so what, what? I think we're trying to. What, at least what I'm trying to articulate about Venus's game is, is like, from a like what you're bringing to the table is great. Like, however, your communication with people is still individual. And what Boston Rob probably has or may have is that individual touch one-on-one -on -one that people may say, oh, this, but 
one on one, I have a great relationship. I'm building these individual relationships. Here's the thing, right? Where I agree, right? Like, I definitely think it's a communicational style. But what I love about Venus's game is that, like, Venus is playing her game. And, like, exactly. when she talks to everyone, she's trying to rope everyone in to what her game is. And while it doesn't make sense as a viewer, I love it because I feel like there's similar people on this season that are doing the same thing. Uh, and I think it makes it for an interesting season. Like I think about your season, James, where a lot of people were scared to go against the grain and would just kind of like not make big moves. And here you have someone that, although it might not be beneficial to your game, like Venus is going after it. And so as a viewer, uh, so I'm yeah, going to Venus. I get, I get you, but I feel like, like people were trying to make big moves. The question is like, what? It's kind of what you saw more with this episode is why they don't happen. Like from a like how things matriculate control a vote, where Maria and Charlie are like, okay, this and like, so like, you can like making the big move and trying to make stuff happen is good. But the people in control, the person that made this vote happen, like Maria, like the the Charlies are making things happen a different way. So <laughs> they're showing that person that's going around going, yes, yes, like. I'm I'm trying to move and that's great, you know, but however, what's more effective is ex building actual relationships and having those relationships dictate, you know, the gameplay where you are roping people in, where people are afraid to get rid of you, that you aren't the back of vote. I right? think we all and agree think, with you, James. We yeah. agree on that. We agree it's about these interpersonal relationships. Um, I think I think my stance is just like we're looking at this woman who comes from this. And from this walk of life of however old she is. And um, and I think that's how I'm judging her and her game. Bryce, to piggyback on what you said, um, you said she's playing her game. She's making her moves. I think a really good player needs to keep in mind that you are playing your game and you want to rope these people in to your moves, but everyone should be as self-centered. Like they're playing their games so don't forget that just because they don't want to make this play with you, that's because according to their game, that's that's not in line with their game at the time. Well, I mean, and that's why I kind of love Venus's take because it's like, if you not with me, you against me and let's go. So again, I'm not saying that it's oh. the best uh, game wise, but there is something that I can relate. I'm not always right all the time. And sometimes I only see things through my perspective and I think everybody's attacking me and I got to go. So it's like, I, uh, I think that it makes for good TV. That's, and that's get Venus, let Venus play a second time around. I feel like, you know, like I feel like she could hone in and see a different perspective. And I think you might have a, a serious problem on planet Venus. <laughs> yeah, I think Venus's game instincts are actually pretty solid. I think every time she's on screen, it's entertaining one way or another. But I have to agree with all of you guys in a sense that not the gameplay is not great just because of her the way she relates to people in her interpersonal relationships. Um, I mean, we saw it with Maria kind of laid it out for her this episode. Uh, I actually don't hate the Boston Rob comp in a sense where even in all stars, he played this really kind of aggressive game and that led to him losing to Amber despite him pulling the strings. Uh, granted, I think Boston Rob had a little bit better like interpersonal relationships. Um, Bryce, I kind of want to ask a question here because Venus has been an extremely, like, I guess, witty, but sort of snarky and sassy player. Uh, but we've seen other, you know, I guess, snarky players really succeed in the new era, like new, new era, like Jam Jam jumps to mind. And during your season, you showed sort of a combination of, so you had some strategy with Morgan and Alexis and LJ, but you were also not afraid to be a little bit snarky. How do you think a player who's like, sort of like Venus or like Jam Jam or like you can embrace that sassiness, that snarkiness, but also combine it with strategy in an effective way that sort of like Jam Jam did that led him to victory versus Venus, who I think is really struggling right now because of it. Um, I, again, I also think that's a part of the luck of the game. And that's a great question, Jack. I think it's about, again, who you're with and who can receive it and who cannot receive it. And again, we see Venus 
again, we don't really know the story as to why Venus was othered, right? Like, we just see them talking that she was uh, a threat and this and that. We know that her and Soda were cool at one point in time, and we don't know what has happened. But I really think it's about the different players. I think that uh, Jam Jam was able to assimilate into with Carson, with uh, with Carolyn, with all these other people. They got it, you know? Uh, with me, I, my sassiness was seen as, like, just uh, an immediate threat. Like, they didn't really look at, oh, it wasn't necessarily my gameplay or my strategy moves. They just looked at, like, my sassiness as, like, oh, he's able to relate to people. Uh, so, again, I just think it's really about the different people that are around. And I think the more diverse Ooh. we get with different people in different walks of life that have experienced other people and maybe haven't uh, experienced other people. Because, again, I look at someone like Hunter and Tevin, and I love the fact that, like, Tevin is Hunter's number one, and like he's able to see Hunter for the full per person that he is. Uh, but again, I love to see these type of characters, and I love the different style of gameplay. Some style of gameplay gets you a million dollars. Uh, others, we'll we'll see where it lands. Get you that sea of money too. You know I mean, what and the sea of money. And I, again, I, some people are are you playing for a million dollars? Some people are playing for. The sea of money. Some people are playing for the Kelly Wentworth edit. Like you, I, I don't. Like people's motives could be different. And I, I do also think that you know, like a lot of people are playing, like do play, like Venus out there, right? It's just depending on like, is it going to be shown? Like, is there time to be shown? What else is going on in the episode that allows for that to be shown? And I think that vote on that beach was a lot more complicated where we got a lot more time with, you know, that first vote. than we did the second vote where I feel like it was kind of, they, they may have, they've tried to build some illusion up, but I, I think like the, the Yanu three, were going to take someone out from Sega, be it, you know, Ben or Tim, regardless of whatever happened, that was going to be what the move was. So that's why we spent more time and we're seeing more times with how these votes, you know, formulate. So, yeah, there's always someone that's out there trying to, you know, get some crazy stuff to happen. And the job is to try to keep the crazy stuff from happening if you're in power and to make crazy stuff happen if you're not in power. And I think you're able to. And I think what Venus is doing, which I don't know if she's trying to do, but people aren't necessarily threatened, threatened by her, you know, at this present moment, you know, in the early merge. And, and they're taking so she's a potential swing vote. But because you're not threatened, because she's so outgoing and this may be something you want to hit may do the people that people didn't know where they're coming from the mariah oh i don't i don't people don't couldn't read where she was coming from the soda the soda where are you like so many different conversations i don't know where you're coming from you know those people are the people that you know got eliminated because they were more of a threat as opposed to a venus so i think that may be something people want to take into account where if you do make yourself known to kind of what you're standing for and what type of game you're trying to play as opposed to not if you are on the bottom of these alliances you can get through maybe get through this early mid merge and then make some hay when the numbers start going down so yeah yeah it's interesting in venus's case at this point she's sort of staying because her gameplay is so messy people are like okay the, the devil we know we'd rather keep her around than the devil that we don't well, what does that say though what does it say bryce i mean uh, I feel like it's a part of luck and it's a part of yeah. it's the people you with and what they view as threatening and what but, they view as not threatening. But it, had, but but had Venus, to me. I, had Venus not been playing her own game, they wouldn't have viewed her like that. Like the devil we know worse than yeah. the like I feel like if she would have assimilated, then it's like they still would have not liked Venus and then they would have still been pushing to get Venus out. So I mean I, I yeah, I, I, I think disagree. Yeah, I think different to me too. So Jack, go ahead. Well, I just think Venus's issue is the way that she approaches people. Uh, it seems to be very game body oriented, where she doesn't really work to build these connections, but she goes to them and says, "Hey, like I think we should do this," and they're like, "Well, you never really come and talk to me. Like I don't. Why would I?" And even from her um, selection of tweets last week, where. She it kind of reminds it kind of reminds me of what Wendell was saying earlier, where just because you something's the best move for you doesn't mean it's the best move for everybody else. And she was talking about like, oh, obviously Charlie is the best move. Like no one wants to make a big move. Like, God forbid the women want to work together. But like if I'm a Ben, why would I want to vote out Charlie? Why would I want the women to all stick together? Like, of course I'm not gonna do what you're saying. Like that doesn't that doesn't make any sense. Um 
So I think her game instincts for her game are solid, but I think she doesn't really approach people with the finesse required to make solid bonds to execute that strategy. And I think that explains why she was kind of on the outs on Nami. And then as soon as the merge hits, everyone's kind of wary of her. And people are so wary of her that they know that everybody else in the game is too. And they're sort of like, well, we don't need to vote her out because no one's going to work with her. Um, so yeah, I mean, maybe it's going to keep her around, but I, I definitely think um, her assimilating more with the group would give her a better shot to actually win. Even though it might up the odds of her getting voted out earlier, you might also have a better chance to win down the line. I think if Venus, I think, um, I think it would be cool to see Venus come back. No, I don't know. I mean, she could win this season. I think it'd be cool to see Venus come back and see what different things she does to her game if she comes back. So don't want to pivot, but I do. We we are talking about Venus, and you know she. But I also like talking about great gameplay as well. You know, like you know, like not not like I mean, I feel like a lot of times you have to kind of read in between the lines, and. Like, we had to give the winner a Survivor Jam Jam. You know, you were partying with this guy recently a couple of times. I feel like restraint, especially in the new era, is one of those things that is very, very tough to put on camera, but it's indicative of everybody that have won this game. You know, when you take it back to, to a Marianne, who necessarily was in the same position, was considered at the bottom, you know, but, you know, was able to, you know, then stay around become less threatening considering people knew where she stood, you know, where they didn't, they're like, okay, we know the type of game she's playing and she was able to pull it out at the end with relationships. You know, you have, you, like, I feel like that is the way to play if you're not coming into the merge in a dominant position, like a Reba and a D. Like if you're making you out a mergatory and you have a, you have an army with you and y'all want to stay and rock out, bam, rock out. But if you're not part of that dominant alliance coming through mergatory, then what you want to do is wait for that bigger group to crack and try to get in there around seven or eight. And I think Venus is in position to do that. However, what you want what you want to do is you want to be you want to have a person and not going to tribal. I don't think she has a person out there. And what we're seeing is the people that don't have people are getting voted out. So they didn't have a number one. Mariah didn't have a number one. Tim had a number one, but that number one Ben. You know, didn't have the juice to keep Tim there, you know, and Tim, Tim didn't have the juice to keep himself there. So, I mean, I think we're learning some lessons here. Um, I think we're seeing some great survivor play. Um, I think we see some questionable. I think the fact that Namdi just Namdi didn't play survivor, I think they were just itching to get a vote. And, oh, yeah, and I don't know if the grass is greener because – I think Charlie was the right vote, and we can get into that later if I was them, because he's a much more connected and dangerous player than Soda, who you see through at the present moment. So, and the fact they didn't know what was happening at the previous vote, which I think was also interesting and probably happened last year, where you didn't know who went home. Like, I think, you know, that's also another concern, too, as well. So, we're going to get into it. You know, I just wanted to say, I think there was great gameplay all around. You know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to dwell too much on Venus, you know, but I think there's some other stuff happening there that's happening on this season with players that are that are pretty good, too, as well. I think we can dissect so many people just as much as we just dissected Venus, especially Absolutely. with you on the pod, James. Um, my question to you, James, did you just say you think that Charlie was more connected than uh, than um, Soda? Is that what you said? Oh, definitely. I mean, so. I think this is kind of like when we're, when we're talking about Survivor and pushback, right? And, oh, people don't want to do something. That's like showing that someone is connected, right? So if you go into emergency and say, hey, we want to – you try to rally your troops. I'm trying to get this person out, right? You talk to everybody. Everybody's like, okay. And you go to tribal, and you go to vote for that person, and no one else votes with you, you or you're not getting those okays, you have to kind of read into saying, if people aren't, like, gun-ho and they're not voting with me – this person may actually have some like the, the juice that you may not see. They may have. They and, may have something else going on. And, and I think that's the thing where you have to kind of adjust. Where it's kind of like, yo, we want to get this person out. One vote, it doesn't doesn't really work. Like you try to get Charlie out before, which would have been a sound vote. People were like, nope, we're not taking Charlie out. We're taking the other person out. So that right there tells you, you has people that like have his back. You know. And you have to kind of think about that from a when the next vote happens and articulate those arguments where 
yo, who's protecting Charlie? They're protecting Charlie. Or is Charlie protecting you? And, and and move and move it like that and kind of change the narrative and paint why Charlie is a danger for other people as opposed to, you know, let's get Charlie out. Like you have to have that reason why. And, okay. and kind of cement at home. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. Not to disagree with you. Um, disagree with me. Come on. It's fine. No, no. I'm, I'm just asking another question. Okay. Do you think that Charlie being more connected or dialed in than Soda, because I have a lot to – I think we will have a lot to say about Soda. Do you think that is based on his relationship with Maria? you think all the equity is through Maria and her connections? Or do you think, think it's – all I think it's been two days and Charlie doesn't care as long as it's not him. And I think in that situation, he didn't feel like in when we said a pre previous situation, someone came to Venus and said, Oh, we're voting this person. You're like, hey, no, I think Charlie's the best vote. Charlie, on the other hand, who you know probably has a preference between Soda and Venus, probably would prefer the person who the world is named down to go home, said, you know, whatever happens, you know, I'm like those people, when people aren't part of your long-term strategy, right? And you have numbers around them. Who cares about, like, you know, which one of them goes if they're not part of your long-term numbers in the next couple of votes? Like, either or, they're both going to go. You know, so I feel like his strategy was to sit back. He got the information, which came out fast and furious somehow. Like, I don't know how that much stuff happened between there and that merge, but, boy, they was moving. And, you know, he was able to sit back and kind of let the chips fall where they fall. You know, and, you know, you have to get credit for that restraint. Because a lot of people that feel the pressure, you know, start, you know, spinning out when that pressure is on. You know, four people from one tribe. I'm just here, my other person, and my partner got immunity. It, I was getting flashbacks personally, but that's just, you know, five less people to work with. You know, and and to be able to stay calm in that situation and to be able to still function, make it through, doesn't have any blood on his hands really or no explanation. It's like, because you can always say, I was just trying to survive. And, you know, you know, Tevin was the main culprit on that. And I, I feel like he is, he is, he's slowly lowering on the radar as somebody you need to get out when you have these bigger threats around. And eventually the game switches, you know. I just agree on Tevin lowering his threat, though. Uh, I think you're talking about Charlie. Uh, you were talking about Charlie or Tevin? I, but I thought he then said Tevin, right? Oh, no. I, I think Tevin's threat level uh, definitely is – is going to go up there. I mean, I think he, we'll, we'll talk about that. We can but, move forward. You know, so, but. but is it easier to keep your cool when you have people protecting you that you can talk to? And is it less easier when you don't have anybody and you have to like spit at the wall to everybody? Who who are you? Can you put? Like, the I'm talking like Charlie, like you said, like and mind you, I think that he did a great job here. But it's easier to maintain your cool when you can go to your allies and freak out to them, and they can calm you down, as opposed to Venus. Who can she go with? Like I feel like you see Venus like spitting at the wall. And I don't know if that's the correct analogy, but like she's spit firing at like anybody and everybody because she doesn't have that calmness. So I, yeah. like, I just that that could also be. I mean, having that person out there on the island, you know, Wendell you had dom so you you probably had the best partner of all best partners as far as rider dies you're able to have like it's just kind of when you're playing traders or mafia any of those type of social deduction games the reason why those games were created because to show that two people working together when people don't have information is way more powerful than the whole entire group so not having that one person is a disadvantage to anybody playing the game and to have that one person is an advantage especially if you can't trust that person and that's why that does allow charlie to be a little more calmer because he knows maria is at least going to tell him when not to be calm hopefully you know that's the game was you know you can calm, you can trust that person and then calmly get voted out was it a calm move for him to tell venus that he was the one that wrote her name good question bryce was it a good move? Well, I don't. Well, ask Q. I don't, hey, people, yo, I love the way Q talks out there, yo. Like, if but, people were like James, I was out there talking to people crazy. I was like, bro, like, I was on my best uh, communication behavior. Um, I mean, were you? You have to vote for people, you, and you have to defend your. Like, I mean, should he have said anything? I mean, not necessarily, but I mean, he did. I mean. Will that buy credibility from other people? Possibly. I mean, Venus is not a power player in the game. So, like, like, does it really impact anybody? What do we think his motivation was? Was it to, to like, 
like to to chill soda out was it to extend an olive branch to soda like yo hey i did it sometimes it's just like people just say and do stuff like if someone's it's like inconsequential like you know like venus doesn't have any power in the game so saying that he voted for her is doing what but again is the tribe morale important no okay so, so they're the merge. There's no more tribes. So let like, everything like, like the tribes is over. Like, but yeah, like, oh. but but not the. But I'm saying like the morale of everybody at the camp. If you had Venus setting everything on fire and everyone's getting worked up, does it benefit Charlie to like put the fire out and then everything is like he oh, let look. the fire burn. He let the fire burn first, then did it. Like he ain't put no fire out. He let so I, 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 it. And, and I mean, he didn't put it out. It already. She said one person did it. He just said, "No, I voted for you." And, so, and you know, sometimes you do things. I think what Venus does too is like you. you a reaction is a reaction. And you want to gauge how people are, how people get, how people respond to you. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I feel like, hey, I mean, I, I think I told people that I voted for them. I think I don't know. Um, I think I probably did. Well, when I voted, they went home. I don't know. Either way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, what's your cool. response to Q though? What's your response to Q to Charlie? Uh, yo, bro, I feel like you're able to play based on just the people around you, right? And like, we'll see kind of if he long term runs people the wrong way by kind of being more of an explainer. But I feel like I talked to my people in my cast, I rubbed them the wrong way because the way I was explaining and questioning some things, which actually wasn't shown on the television screen, and, and that contributed to kind of some of my relationships. However, I mean, I think it's just interesting. There's no right or wrong way to play this game. And that's why I think this is why you had these type of podcasts where you can say someone should do this, this, and this, but you don't have to do this and this and this to win the game. You know, so everybody does it different. Here's my question. Uh, Q saying that to Charlie, Q saying that to Charlie because it didn't benefit whose game? Q. Yeah, I mean, now, I mean, that's what, I'm, now yeah. I'm just asking because. Q I mean, might have been right doing... that it wasn't great for Charlie either, but obviously, yeah. you're absolutely right. Q only cared because. Like, but I do think maybe I see both sides for Charlie. I don't think it was necessarily a bad move. I definitely wouldn't have gone to him like Q did. Um, I do think there's something to be said about letting Nami continue to burn those bridges just by letting them have those th ideas about each other. But I also think Charlie, you know, he's sort of playing up this younger, innocent, fun-loving guy. And so to own up and be like, Hey, my bad, I voted for you. Everyone's gonna be like, oh, Charlie's honest. Like, Charlie's a nice kid. And I think that's the perception of Charlie where that's how he's gotten in good with people uh, in Sika and at the merge. So I, I do think Charlie's in a really good spot and definitely disagree with Q going. To, and I love Charlie's response when Q came to him. Charlie was just like, oh, you're right. Like, I messed up. You're, you're so right, Q. Uh, I like that. And I'm sorry, Bryce. There might, there also, like, if he didn't own up to it, there might be something to throwing a little stray vote out there when you know all the votes are in one place. Uh, no, kinda... You should always throw a stray vote out there. Like, there should never be a 13 0 vote. Like, 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 there should never be a 10 0 vote. There should never be a 9 0 vote. Like, that should, that, those should never ever happen ever in the history of, of the game. Like, that, like, like, when those votes happen, it's like people are really just trying to be on the right side of the vote. And if everybody's on the right side of the vote, then someone's interest, <laughs> people are playing a great game or people are playing horrible games. And that's kind of when you see a, a unanimous vote. So I feel like you know, you have to protect yourself in New Era from a shot in the dark, from a idol. I feel like that's the one thing that doesn't happen anymore in New Era. People don't play idols for other people as often as they probably should um, when they can influence a vote. Like, oh, you want to pile on votes on somebody, great. I don't care if the person goes home, but I didn't get control of vote. I can send home anybody I want because I have this idol you all are putting your votes as one place. So I feel like that hasn't been used as much in the new era, but I think at some point it has to get used as a, as a tactic to kind of to switch things up, like, you know, so. Yeah. Um, moving on, before the immunity challenge, we also see Ben wake up in the, in the middle of the night uh, after, I think, a, a bad dream and has a little bit of a panic attack. Kenzie is there to settle his nerves. Uh, I don't think there's too much to take away from it other than it was just a really nice personal moment between those two uh, that gets brought up later as well. But 
I mean, then, I think stick stick your pin in that, you know, because you know if Kenzie kind of if she gets another person with Tim leaving, right? You know, then that opens up somebody to have another. Everybody wants a person, right? And then kind of less people are there. So you have a, a Charlie Maria. I don't think Ben was really a part of that. So now you have the Yanu four who now have picked up maybe a Hunter, maybe a Ben. And now it's a Yanu five going into five. This is the numbers game here. So like you, you're looking for, you're looking for six now. So, and everybody has different plans and thoughts. So it's going to be interesting moving forward with the way they highlighted that because those moments happen more than, than than you think on Survivor, Bryce. I don't know if it happened when you were playing, but people get down, people start crying, and people comfort people and have real conversations. So they're just showing this aspect. And I think you're even there for people you don't even like sometimes on the show right. that go through stuff like when you're there. So they're just showing a little bit of camp life that may have some game implement 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 implement. implement, implement, implement. I would have implemented uh, implications. 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 Uh, nothing about game related, but Ben having a panic. If that's Ben having a panic attack, like uh, I know that was like so hard, but I I just was like Ben is the cutest person ever. Like Ben just woke <laughs> up and was like, oh, it's kind of hard out here. Like you know, like I don't know, but I mean I know panic attacks are real, but Ben, even though he was he having a hard time, cool, he just though, like. Yeah. Woke up Ben esque, and uh, it was good to see Kenzie kind of comfort like him. The, the chillest and, panic attack in the right. world, basically. He pulled up like the Undertaker, WrestleMania style, like, oh, you know, I feel bad. Like, no, but no, it's, it, and it's good for him to be vulnerable. I feel like showing the tribe that you're not super strong is also something that that is and can be good. And I feel like you should display weakness at all times. Um, and when you're playing, absolutely, or, or showing, a lot showing that you're not strong really means that you are strong. And again, I think that Ben has a way of revealing himself uh, that disarms people. But we know Ben is playing, and we know Ben means business. Like it makes me think back to like when Jim was searching around with the machete. Then the next time Ben is talking to her, he got the axe. Like right, like. Hey, but the two most dangerous people didn't go home tonight. You know, like Charlie and Ben, you know, both would have been better moves for everybody else playing the game. I love what they're doing, but it would have been better to get those. Like Tim, you know exactly where Tim is going from. And, you know, I feel like Soda didn't really have too many moves outside of that, considering Tevin was probably her number one and she was beefing with Venus. You know, I feel like, you know. Yeah. I question the Soda edit. What do you mean? I don't, I don't know like, about I, that. I think I think Soda was a lot more personable and connect, not connect, a lot more likable um, than we saw. And I think that when we finally saw her go out, and you see how like the people are looking at her, I feel like I feel like that was their true connections with her. I you, for some reason, I just think that I just think that we got this. She she's over the top and she sings a lot and she does a lot. For some reason, I just think she's a lot more likable. I, I get she's a nurturer. I get that, like, she might be over the top and a lot. But I, I get that she's a nurturer. And I think that sometimes, because we don't see a lot at night and different things, I think that that is the soda that maybe we're missing. Uh, and that can bond people together. Uh, although we're all over the place. Here's my other issue with kind of, like, not soda's game, but, like, when you are in the dominant tribe and you want to say strong. Like, I feel like, yeah, you should want to stay strong, but you should also want to be like out and about. You have to, but you, but you want to install, you want to have, a, you want to have your, your, your allies feel confident in you and your yeah. ability, right? But so, I, like, that's also playing the game, though. Like, right. they don't, no, 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 know. right. But you, but you have to under, all right. So, like, all right, if, if you're, if so, if you're going to tribal, right, and everybody from your alliance is trying to vote somebody out, right? Why do you care about building a relationship with that person? Like, you, like, you have to kind of demonstrate like that is how you if this person is on the outs, right? You want to make sure that I get hey, I'm having a conversation with this person. This is what you want to make you don't want to keep on trying to build relationships with people that are kind of on the outs. Like you have to kind of pick and choose your battles, especially when you're in the power alliance. When you're not in the power alliance, then you kind of can get you have free reign to talk to everybody. 
But see, I feel like the thing what I don't like about the Power Alliance, sorry, it's all over the place, is that it makes you too comfortable. Because again, I love Soda. I wanted Soda, like I, like Soda was, in my mind, one of the winner picks. And it's like, you see Soda from episode three when Randon was in there and him and Venus was beefing and Venus was like, girl, let me give you a hug. And uh, Soda was like, make it quick. You know, like she... Her mind was always in the game. And so, like, for me, it's like to see her now and then kind of sort of get blindsided. Again, I just, it leads to that comfortability of being in that dominant alliance. But was she? That's the thing. Was she? I'm sorry. My bad, Win. It's like, because, like, like people, that's, that's the thing in the game where people think they're in a, like, well, who's, are they calling the shots or are they just part of the team? And that's the hardest thing, the part of the. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I don't know if she believed that she was calling the shots, but she definitely believed that she was part of the team. And that's my issue with uh the, in the new era, you have the dominant tribe that doesn't lose anybody. And then you come in kind of sort of strong. And I think that you let your peripheral view down a little bit because you're like, we're going to dominate this game. And yeah. you're like, I don't know. That's just how no, I, you, I, you, you have to be more focused. Continue. My bad, Wendell. Right. I think the answer is to maintain your alliance while opening up the doors to other alliance and, and going with whichever one is the best at that time. In our case, we were Navidi strong all the way to the end. But in actuality, as soon as we met Laurel and Donathan, we're like, yo, on the low, we're taking this thing home. And that's what we did. So, like, then once post-merge, once Navidi's back, I'm telling Kellen, yeah, Navidi's strong. She's looking at me the same thing. She's plotting similar things. I'm going to tell Wendell Navidi strong, but we're going to get him out. So, like, I think the answer is you have your alliance. But you don't be so um, locked into saying, you know what, this is this is it. This is what we got. See ya. And that, but, you gotta be you gotta be flexible. You gotta be well, right. But again, another benefit of going to tribal is that you f you get rid of you. Like, but when you the strong guys, and it's like we are family. But that's hey, but that but that I is like how you decide to play the game though too, right? And, and it's kind of like you have to figure out who's exp who who is expendable in your squad. Like when we went to merge, we thought everybody's going to vote out Ryan, but to our describe, they didn't like. We're, they're like, oh, we like. I'm like, so like you have to pick the people that you within your group. You have your group of four. Who's your three? Who's your two? And if you don't have a two, then you don't got a majority. Like you can like if you're in a big group, but you don't have a number one or number two, or you don't have a subgroup inside that group. Then you ain't. That's not the right group for you. Like is, you, you are a passenger. Is it fair to say that opposites but similar that Venus and Soda has similar games or like similar styles of play? Like not they moves or anything, but Soda was. We're saying that Venus needs to learn to like communicate with people better, right? <laughs> but here we are, Soda, who thinks that she's in this dominant alliance with Hunter Tevin. And uh, like they locked in, but like we know that they looking at soda sideways. I just think that there are they're opposite, but there are some similarities uh, that could be there, right? Because soda didn't have that 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 majority. Like Philip Shepard said, Boston Rob told him the rules: get your majority, get your majority inside your majority. It's old school, but it's simple. Like if you don't have your majority inside your majority, then you need to figure other things out. And if you you have to, you have to, it's hard to make that determination. But that's what you have to do. Should we credit the rest of the people in Soda's alliance for making her feel so comfortable? Should we credit Tevin? Should yes, we... yes, that, that's what I mean by good gameplay. That's great gameplay. That's the game within the game. But that's when... so here's oh, sorry, my question sorry. now. Sorry, because now you got me a little hype. <clears throat> Is there a world where I just wonder what would have happened if Soda would have entertained Venus a little bit more? I don't Isn't think that, the question is, can Venus bring other people in to help them make a vote? Can Zoda bring other people in to make a vote? Like, that's what you're trying to do is make a vote. Like, who can help make a vote and who can't? Okay. Yeah. Does it yeah. say something about Soda's gameplay that a Tevin wants to make a move against a Soda? I'm trying to say. No, I'm trying no, to say, I don't. I don't on, think it does. Hold on a second. I think Tevin, I think Tevin can win the game. I thought Soda could win the game. But th there's your answer right there, though. I Tevin, feel like, but Tevin I, can't, I, oh, my uh, bad, uh, good uh, 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 but, but no, but just, let me land it. 
But if, if 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 they're if if these if this player like a Tevin is like, man, I need to get her out. I think that says something about this that, this woman's game. It goes that, back to what you're saying, guys. Yes. I, I think that mean. was I think it was premature. I feel like it's one of those things where you're worried about the wrong things at the wrong times. Like I I, I don't soda yes. is trying to make trying to make moves, right? But you had to think about if like you had to think about you need to get through and get to the end, right? Not think about who you may yet may lose to at the end, XYZ. You, there's you only so many votes. Premature? You think huh? getting her out is premature? Oh, without a doubt. Without okay. a doubt. With that vote? Yeah. Without, but I think I both of those things are true. Like, I think I think Tevin made this move a little too soon, but I also think the fact that he needed felt like he needed to make this move is a testament to Soda's game, like you were saying. Um, but now so. there's going to be a big, bright, shining, social butterfly light on our man Tevin. Okay. And, well, and I, think I, don't, I don't know, because... He actually voted uh, with Soda, and look, I, I still think he's a threat. Like he's been a threat, but I don't think that he specifically is going to come out of this tribal. It's looking like, I mean, especially we have Venus already taking the credit for this vote. Yeah, but, like, but you saw his reaction. But you you saw this reaction. But also, uh, who sat on the beach and who was coming up to who one by one to speak to? Did y'all see? Like it was Tevin. Tevin. Tevin made the moves. We know. No, we're gonna all agree that it was that this is Tevin's move. Because right yeah. after he made all those moves, we then saw Venus making her moves. Right. Um, I think the show is giving the credit to Tevin for sure. But the yeah. last three seconds of the show. We see Soda giving it to Venus. We see Tevin like, no. And what I think is going to happen now is like, I think Tevin is going to demand that credit within the next couple episodes, somehow, some way, whether it's in front of the jury, whether it's whatever. And I think he's going to end up on the jury because of it. I mean, here's the, the hardest thing to do in the game is to figure out how does, how does someone leaving impact your threat level? Or how people perceive you at your threat level, like where you may be able to play the game at a certain level because you're playing with people who are taking, you know, eyes off of you, whether you know it or not. And it's something hard to really see when you're in the game, right? Because you're playing the game and no one's talking about you X, Y, Z, and you're playing with this person, but you don't know how much, how much, how many shots a soda is taking, how many shots a hunter is taking because they are these like hunter. Big strong guy, so the big personality type person, right? So when you have these people that are shields in front of you from a social, physical X Y Z standpoint, and you're taking less heat, right? You you kind of you do like Bryce said, you do start to feel kind of oh, I feel like I'm, I'm I can just make moves, and you kind of sometimes discount what that other person is bringing from a shield communication, just taking just shots. You know, taking shrapnel on at, at the beach that they're taking, and that's something to really think about. It, that's hard to do in the game, like completely hard to do. And what's crazy, uh, James? I love what you just said. You're absolutely right, and I'd almost venture to say that a Tevin and a Soda are more similarly situated than a Tevin and a um, Hunter. Hunter, to where Soda is taking those social shots all day, all day. Hunter is a big meat shield. Him and Q are the same. I feel like people in this season, they aren't even really looking at them as, you know, like, they're like, all right, we could, we could get them whenever. I think the threats were these social butterflies. All right, now one's gone. Now, now the eyes are going to be on Tevin. Um, yeah, so, so you, I think you're right. And I think it's not like, all right, Tevin, you still have your bestie, your meat shield. Nah, it's Tevin. That social meat shield was the real uh, meat shield. And that's something that I would love to talk about, mm. how the evolution of the game, how people like when Jonathan was in, like, oh, we're going to get that big old meat, that big old... Whoa! <laughs> that, Whoa! That big old... We're going to get that big old meat out the game. And it is so interesting how the game evolves to what the big old meat becomes because, like, now the big old... <laughs> Right, you meat <laughs> is now the big old personality meat, and that is, I think, something that needs to be studied because the more diverse that you get, 
uh, the different types of meat you can get as a shield. And it's just interesting that, and <laughs> although like, we haven't talked cool. much about Tim, but we could talk about his, what meat he brought to it. And I think that he brought a very strategic and tapped in meat that is not necessarily right, so a, different a big old, like, you know, brisket meat that we're used to like a Jonathan. It's a, a different dialed in type of meat. But needless to say, I think that it stands the case that at the merge boot, they want you want to get rid of the big meat, whatever it is. It, no, it depends on the merge. Like it, I think it depends on you get rid of what is most what is most not like you, right? In a sense, right? And it's about perception, right? So Q is not afraid of Hunter, right? So Hunter's threat level to Q is like, I mean, he's an he's athletic person. Meat. He's he's an athletic person. He's not like threatening, right? That, that doesn't threaten me. Now, if you're athletic and you have a social game, then, that, then may raise big your, me. that may raise your that may raise your overall threat. Survivor? Game. <laughs> a meat shield. Can we use so, a different analogy. <laughs> Why hey, not? I hate the term I hate the term threat, but we continue to use it. So um I just feel like from an awareness standpoint, people are more shot wary of from a cast standpoint, what is most opposite from what that cast dynamic is. So if you have, you know, your cast is more introverted, you know, then the extroverts are going to be the threats. If your cast is more extroverted, then the introverts are going to be the threats. If your cast is like, you know, less athletic, then the athletic people are going to be the threats. Like, like introverted meat, an extroverted meat, like right? you know, at the <laughs> bro. Bring I'm the trying, bell. I think, I think James is right though in that. Um, and Bryce, you too, to a degree. Uh, I think it depends on the season. So, okay, in this season for me, my kind of a shield will be a whatever. In my case, me and Dom were good for one another. We're both in our 30s, we're both kind of good at a lot of stuff, whatever. I think in this case, you got um, Soda and Tevin, they're both very social. They're good for each other. Hunter and Q, they're good for each other. Um, yeah, that's that's what I got. Yeah. Can we get to the challenge real quick? Yeah. Do we have to? Uh, Shout out to the challenge. <laughs> can we get some real? Can we get some some challenges? Like I just standing on. I, I, can we? I, I get it. We don't. We want to make Survivor less athletic, and we don't want to be so physical, and we don't. God forbid, if Survivors touch each other, and uh, you don't like this challenge. James? I think this is a, a a classic staple challenge. I want to. I don't know if it didn't premiere, but it definitely was on. I mean, Kageon. I mean, this is cool. This is great. Like you're like I'm. I just I just feel like the physicality in the game is just, have you like, competed has, in this has challenge, kind of gone away. James? Huh? Have you competed in this challenge? No, I haven't. So how can you attest to the physicality? I'm talking about in general. Like you're not pulling people off of poles. You, I ain't seen. Well, I mean, now I agree with you on that. I was just talking with somebody else. I miss. Do you remember the ring when you would be in a ring? Yeah. And you like, would have to like. Now I miss challenges like that. Now, mind you, I don't know if it was Tyson or somebody. Now, when they was back flipping the ladies, I ain't agreed oh, to I that. I thought that Eric was killing the line. Yeah, Eric. He hit her with a beanbag like yo. <laughs> <laughs> but or I miss the ones where you stand on the the podium and it's two people and you like yeah, gotta you wreck now. Now yeah. I do miss challenges like that. Yeah. It's like it's, it's like I get it, but then it's but it, I understand it. If I'm not, it's just more like hey, we get it. We want it to be equitable for everybody. However, there's a lot of stuff in there for the you know non-athletic, non-mentally tough people out there, and it's kind of like yo, like. Like, give the physical people, like, something, you know, that keep them in the game, possibly in the second half. So, um, okay. just like we're giving the, men, like, we're giving the Survivor super fans something in uh, line up all the season's logos, because I wouldn't have done well at that. Uh, a fan, uh, Robin, at our party yesterday, she said she is a new fan of Survivor. She started in the pandemic, and she would have aced it and she loved it right so so if they're handing something to the super fan Jack. then why not hand something to the the big strong the casual that's the argument yeah I, I, let the cat like i mean keep it so like i mean have things for the casual too you know i mean like this thing is about like have a regular trivia challenge do musical chairs like i really it doesn't have to be like anything that crazy however 
you know, I'm just, you know, I. That's where I'm at. So we can go talk about the challenge. Well, right? listen, I only want to talk about one thing and one thing only about this challenge. And I need for y'all to weigh in because there seems to be a pattern. And I need to talk about it. Because uh, oh, I know what you're about to say. Because up, now, I love this man. You I, it. Sure, surely I do love this man. Uh, is Break there a show. planet that starts with the letter Q? I'm sure there is. There just hasn't been named yet because <laughs> I had to rewatch the episode. And when I rewatched the episode, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to have to talk to Q, but I just found it very interesting that in the confessional. What do you say? He, well, given, first of all, given the, the pep talk that he gave Charlie, like, given everything that we know about this man that we have seen with, like, when the Purple Tri had been losing, uh, it just doesn't strike me as someone that would throw a challenge. Maybe he did. I don't know. But I just thought it was real convenient for Q to be like, <laughs> I mean, Ryan threw a you challenge. Know, you know, I Ryan want them challenge. to see. <laughs> Cause you know I'm nasty on that. I could, I, I, I could stand all day. I still be standing on there. If Jeff, uh, if Jeff, let me hold on, Jeff. Oh, oh. y'all want me to do a confession? Oh, oh. I, I fast, still be I, standing. I fast forward through the challenge. I, he I, said. I'm sorry. He said that he. He said that he jumped off on purpose. I mean, now, I feel Q. like in that situation, he probably felt safe and secure and knew he wasn't going to win. I mean, it's like these challenges, you know, someone like Kenzie is probably going to win. Like, you know, unless someone's like a yogi or something like that. This is, you know, built for them. You know, so at that point, what's the point of standing well, up there? I know this not the same cue that almost cussed Jess out when she wasn't holding up the block. I don't no. see it. I don't get that mentality from Q. I get Q want to win at any given time. Well, However, well, pre merge they didn't do a good job winning. Well, you know, I mean, uh, I know. And you saw. I also, I mean, what I do love about that confessional, if it is not true that he didn't jump off, I love the way Q can uh, spin a story because. I think, but honestly, I think that that is a, a valuable trait that if Q was at the end, baby, I, <laughs> everything that it happened, Q planted. Right. Oh, this is the host because of Q. Right. At the, you, the you, end. Well, how, how you right. That is a, actually a great fact. That's what I'm like, saying. No, no, no not was, with that, what you said, but what you said about Final Tribal. Final Tribal is an actual skill of storytelling. And if you can tell the best story that makes the most sense, you typically can win the game. Listen, like, Q would be at Final Tribal like the most other physical guy that was out there was Ryan. Who you think put that bamboo like that when he was sleeping? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who you think put that bamboo? But you weren't on the same tribe as him. <laughs> I gave him that bamboo. Man, out to Ryan. <laughs> right, shout out to Ryan. Brandon, Brandon, Brandon. Uh, Brandon. No, that's that the thing. I, I don't think it's a bad idea here for Q not to win this challenge, but given his track record, I think that. And usually, you would want that confessional to come maybe before the challenge, not after the challenge. <laughs> but I mean, given that he dropped you know eighty points at the celebrity basketball game, anything's possible for Q. So. <laughs> um, well, yeah, it was, a fun, that, it was a lot of fun dancing. If a celebrity basketball game did happen, <laughs> I will say, though, Q was crossing when DZ over. <laughs> oh, <shoot. laughs> when like that, though? I'm just saying. <laughs> listen, again. Okay. <laughs> so, Jack, who won these challenges? Like, anything else happened? I was fast forward through a challenge. Anything else happened eventful? They played like an alphabet game or something. Well, so, there was, like, a lot of fun, there was a lot of fun conversation because the, the, the water was really flat. A lot of the, there was just a lot of standing. So, I mean, we had challenging. It's tough. Yeah. I can't speak to it, but Q, it was informing Jeff about some vernacular. <laughs> when, when <Tim> was like, <laughs> and I'm actually curious from you guys 
when Tim was like, what's up, Jeff? How did you interpret that? Because I didn't really no. interpret that as like, what time is it? Wait, but. Bryce, before you continue, James, you should have watched the challenge for this reason, because there was a it, lot of blackness in the challenge. Very much so. And oh. I also think that Jeff got it a little bit wrong, and I think that Q, Q explained it right. Like, it does mean, like, what's up? What time is it? But it doesn't actually... <laughs> Jeff was like, 7.33 Eastern time. I'm learning a lot, guys. But also, what time is it coming? Like, what's up, Wendell? What's up? So, <laughs> yes. To, to explain it to James. To explain it to Jack. <laughs> no, because James fast-forwarded through it, so he didn't watch it. But to explain it to James, there was a time Q had already thrown the challenge. He's on the sit-out bench. And <laughs> Tim is like, What's up, Jeff? And Jeff's like starting to say something. And then Q on the sit-out bench was like, nah, that's what black people say when they need to know what time it is. <laughs> so then, they made, they made air. That's yes. Air. So then fast forward in the episode. And then later, <laughs> later in the they challenge, Jeff said it. later in the challenge, Tim again, he's like, what's up, Jeff? Jeff's like, you're at 24 minutes remaining. <laughs> so there was Yo. that. But then there was also a part when they were all talking. Q was on the bench, and Q was like, so I think Jeff might have said, Q, what are your thoughts on that? He said, I can't talk. My daddy taught me, if I'm not in the fight, shut my mouth. Okay. And again, this interaction leads me to believe you did not throw the challenge. But continue, Wendell, because uh, go on. So then they're on still water. When this challenge was done before, Marianne and them fell off in three minutes, right? In this challenge, they're going for a long time because it's, it's like standing on the ground. Anyway, so then my man Tim is like, you know what? Shout out to my wife. Shout out to my kids. Shout out to Tevin's mom. Shout out to Maria's kids. He's just giving all the shout outs. Cue on the bench. Shout out to Pookie and Day Day from such and such. That's what black people say when they on the radio. Tim said, yo, daddy said to shut your mouth if you're not in the fight. And what and what Q do? He was like, "You right." <laughs> that, so, that, so 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 this is this is the this is why Tim went home. I, I, yes. I know exactly. I know oh. that, 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 that tells me everything right Absolutely. there. Absolutely, yeah. I, I I agree. Tim, right Tim, now, Tim when strikes I, me as like a no. Like it's like when you, I understand Tim's game a lot. I was I feel like. It still strikes you as a yo man, like what we doing here? Like we here to actually what we doing? <laughs> like that's what crazy to that put that together, James, because I wasn't thinking that, but now that you say it, it clicks. It's like Tim sons Q real quick, but it was funny. Yo, t- uh, Q, the, the people not about getting sun. Or, I don't know if he got sunned him. I'm not saying he sunned him, but people like when you can respond quickly. And you and when you when you when you're firm in your response and re, people do not like that in the game because people say you're being confident, you're cocky, X Y Z. However, if you're doing that from the bottom, it's like a whole different thing. Where it's like, oh, you're assertive, you're you're playing. But when you do that, when you have a quote like when you have Tim doing it, or you know, it's like, oh, you're 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 being affirmative, like you're being aggressive, you're doing that, like. Uh, so it's, I think it's a perception thing out there, but people don't like that when you're playing the game. When it's like, yo, I'm not going, I'm not here to get chumped. I'm, I'm going to speak my mind. This it, is going to happen. Tim <laughs> reminded me like he was from Philly. It was the way that he delivered was like not a lot, not enough, but it landed. And it landed in a way that was assertive, dominant, funny, silly, but like it landed. For me also, that interaction with Q said a lot, but also I'm like, Tim, why the F are you up there naming where Tevin's grandmother is from. Why are you saying the village, not the village, but where Charlie from? Why are you saying Dr. Maria's all like, would that that interaction, although we didn't get to see a lot of Tim this season, uh, that interaction of Tim up there showed me everything that I needed to know about Tim. Yeah. He is smart, he's witty. You gonna check me, I'm gonna tell you what your father said to sit your behind down. He was chilling and he knows things about people. Like, and that for me is like, that was always my missing piece about Tim. Like, is he really playing a game? I really feel like Tim was a, a deadly assassin. He showed his Morehouse degree. 
Oh, oh, li- listen, I mean, and you know what they Catholic, say so about- we're not going to care about that too so much. Yeah. Listen, yeah. those Morehouse yeah. men, those Morehouse men are a different grade of meat, okay? That oh. is a different grade of... Uh, but but I think no, let's really? talk about Tim's game in this sense, right? When that journey happened, and I was like, why is Tim volunteering? I think Tim felt like he was the most connected to both sides, and he didn't want somebody like that he didn't trust getting it. So that's why he was able to go on the journey and did not get the heat for going on the journey. Like, I feel like there's, like, little subtle things that happen in the game you have to pay attention to, and that was one of them. Like, why is Tim volunteering to go on this journey? And he volunteered, came back, no hassle, no X, Y, Z. Why did he volunteer? He was cool to everybody enough to go over to volunteer, make sure someone else didn't get an advantage, and report back. Like, being able to do stuff like that, is a sign of someone that's locked in and connected within the game, but it doesn't get highlighted. Like, no one talks about it. But that that shows you that he was somebody, the reason why he was more scary than Ben to some people is because of that fact, where Ben is like, oh. where Tim is kind of more like, all right, yo, I know what y'all trying to do. I mean, y'all going to do it, do it, but it is what it is. You know, It makes and- me look at what he did with Dr. Maria. Uh, and bringing the plus one alliance. At first, I'm looking at it like, you're crazy. Go talk to her. But seeing Tim's personality, like, it's going to work out. The plus one's going to happen. Like, I, I really, Tim, shout out to the Tim merch. But uh, I, Tim was a d- deadly assassin. He also said in his exit press today, Jack, fix your face. Yeah, wait, couple, I'll let, wait, go ahead. The deadly I, assassin is First of all, I'm going to, first, first of all, Jack, what we he not going to, because, hold on, you. wait, because now, oh, this is the moment I've been waiting for, because what we not going to do, Uh-oh, Jack, no, let, don't give let, him the knockout punch. Don't uh, knock him out. Okay, because what's your name, Jack? Okay, <laughs> Jack Linsky. And I, 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 what you not going to do is If you want to see a deadly assassin, you got to look at Jelinski. <laughs> Okay, the only thing I wanted to say about Tim to add to the James and um, Bryce hype, in his exit press, he said his reason for saying Maria's name during the Plus One Alliance talk, because his his number one was Ben. It was to not reveal his number one. Mm. It was to hide his cards. Yeah, so I just wanted to add that to the mix. Oh, yeah, definitely. for you? Huh? I mean, but that was that was something that you had to infer. Like, I feel like you had to give certain players credit. Like for me, I gave Tim enough credit that Tim has said Ben is his number one. Tim is not he's just going on his journey. He's in a good position. Q is the one that's scrambling on the other tribe. You know what I'm saying? Hunter not speaking about no game, and Q brought this up. So Tim is like, all right, y'all, you want to scramble? That's great. You need a name? That's cool. Whatever. So does that change anything about <clears throat> Ben's game for you? So if that is what Tim is saying, then it would lead us to believe that Ben knows about the plus one alliance that we have not seen on screen. But clearly, <laughs> Ben probably knows that what? if Tim is his number one. So right, that right. Makes there me, you go. Like, okay, that's, listen, that's that next James level Jones, I'm talking right about episode. That leads me to believe that Ben no, no. is in a different position potentially. I don't believe I don't got it. I don't got it. I don't think Ben knows about the plus one alliance. Yeah, I think Tim is yeah, here, it, open, but I think that's I what know. it was. Tim wasn't a bad player. I was just like deadly assassin to me was a little like who did he who did he get? Like he, he, he got Jim and not the player idol. He, he's like you sleep until you get called. I mean, but I don't know. Also, but even at the challenge, it's like naming everyone's like family and where they're from. If if Tim doesn't know my family, I'll be like, all right, I guess Tim doesn't know so many. Like one more thing about about Tim and the Green Tribe and Ben, they had the weakest quote unquote tribe from a look standpoint, but they communicated well. And Tim was always the person leading in those, those challenges, right? Even if he he may have messed up a little bit, some of them didn't look the best in some of those challenges, but he was leading, and communication is key in challenges. And I think that's something that is also understated from a tribe that definitely was probably the underdogs going into. Into this season, and like that Tim first had challenge, they had no business business beating, you know, Q and yeah. Jelinski the Juggernaut. So they had no business like winning that challenge. But you look at the people they had on their tribe. What Let they had was communication. Let me just mm-hmm. piggyback on you there. Just I want to add one thing inside Survivor. I don't know. I heard this through a grapevine when he was applying. He listed himself at six two. Who? Tim. Tim. And that's why they got you know. Q over here, they got Hunter over there, 
they got uh, yeah no nah, they get they get medicals they gotta get medical no, bro I, I i went at some at whatever point he listed himself at six two i don't know who i heard it from what I, but i if, promise you that's what i heard if that's this so is weird. not the definition of when you lie on your resume it's like i know sign language <laughs> and then you I mean, get on and, but like, but yeah i think i think ben has an idea about you know yeah. what's about something vaguely whether he knows everything he has an idea about something vaguely going on and yeah. it's like you don't believe that Tim is not more tapped in Ben. Why is it that Tim didn't go home against Jim? And we knew that Jim essentially they like I'm just saying, uh you had to read in between the edit. Like read in between the edit. You know what I'm saying? It. A little bit. I feel you. But it's tough to do the way they Tim edit the show. I don't think Tim was a bad player, but he literally survived one travel council. I don't think we can call him a dead. You know what, Jack? Like I'm that. gonna let you live today because I feel like it like don't do it. He he's, got he's, on survived, paper. he's survived too. I, I feel like he could he could have gave up Ben this 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 episode, but I feel like you know some like the way some people are wired is differently playing. Like everybody has different moral boundaries in the game, right? And everybody is different. He could have gave up Ben, you know, but he didn't want to give up Ben. And I feel like you know that's kind of what it was. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. you gotta yeah, give I'm up not, people. Not. Look, I, I thought that. Honestly, I thought Ben was the better choice for the Yanu group. Um, oh, yeah, well, that was no shade to Tim. I was just. Oh no, he was the better choice for the Yanu group. That, like, that yeah. was you're right. Yeah, that was. Yeah. But I, I, from the challenge as well, I also love the moment where they're playing like the alphabet game, and Q got super flustered. You missed this, James. Q, Q well, was again, like, <laughs> this proves my point, though, Jack. Like, of what? Yeah, um, it, you ain't you ain't just jump off. Is how many times did they? How yeah, many well, times did they have to, game have to do with that though? Because how many times did they have to restart the alphabet game? Like three, four. Okay. And then, and then Charlie was just messing with him. Like Q, I'll start. Uh, Baltimore. Well, let's yeah, let's play the alphabet game. Just a quick round. What are the rules? Uh, you have to say with food. You have to say the letter. I'll go A, apple. Then Jack will go A, apple, B, berries. Okay, so let's just do a quick round real quick. Um, I can start it off. We're doing food? Food. A. Nope. I want to start. Which way are we going? Oh, <laughs> you tell me. Whoa. Clockwise or counterclockwise? <laughs> well, Here we go. We counterclockwise, I'm starting. Go ahead. A, apples. Banana. You're out. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Ah! Oh, okay. Okay. Is what, this is exactly what happened in the challenge. No, you go ABC, yo. What are you talking about? Uh, I know how the good. alphabet works, James, but you gotta you're supposed to repeat the ones that came before you. It's no, like you the don't. No, no, no. That's like loser rules. That's James, how you, you do didn't it. You watch the it's challenge. The 85 James. going to get James. names James. Whatever. James. You don't repeat the other James. names. Apple, Jack. then banana. Jack. Then banana, then cut. Jack, no, we're you going don't, you don't get no clockwise. on that. Started James, off, Jack. it's because in the challenge, Q uh, get, made the rule well, of the other. Q room. clearly is wrong. It's not how you I'm do not it. saying what's right or wrong, James. Mm. I'm just telling you why, why this is funny. Is because in the challenge, Q said you have to repeat, and then everyone forgot to repeat, and he would freak out. No, I'm not saying game. what's right or what's wrong, James. I'm just saying oh, that. Oh, I'm sorry. That, that is hilarious. Happened. Q's rules were very. I feel like Q's rules are very wrong for the game. However, I feel like you know it is what it is. I, I know the way I will play the game. And it's for not the sake of the podcast, the Jack, we're going counterclockwise. Start it off with A or with C. You got start from where I started and continue. A, applesauce. A applesauce. B berries. A applesauce. B Berries, C, cherries. I, I, I'm opting out. I'm not, I'm not, not memorizing. In it. Not Excuse me. Applesauce, applesauce, bananas, cherries. I'm, I'm, yo, I'm anti any horrible way of playing a game. Like that's not Daddy said, it. if you're not in the game, shut up. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Bryce, can you please mute our fourth oh, under? Yes, I'll die. I'll die. Ah! Ah! Okay, go ahead, Jack. A applesauce, B berries, C cherries, D 
El Pickle. <laughs> I thought you about to go somewhere else with that one, yo. You had you dead. Using him? Wow. A, applesauce. B, berries. C, cherries. D, dill pickles. E, eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and you guys don't have time. You're taking time. So the rapid fire, you out. Like this is hey, be rapid. B berries. C cherries. D. Dill pickle. E. <laughs> Y'all some freaks. Eggplants. F. Fiji apple. Good thing like he's muted. <laughs> Good thing he is muted. Is that a kind of apple? <laughs> yeah, they're crisp. They're the crisp ones. Go on, Jack. All right, A, applesauce, B, berries, C, cherries, D, dill, pickle, E, eggplant, F, Fiji, apple, G, guava. A, applesauce, B, berries, C, cherries, D, dill, pickles, uh, E, eggplant, F, Fiji, apples, G, guava, I, Iceberg lettuce. Wait, you're missing. Oh, no, wait, I'm missing. H, H, H. H, H, Hugo Boss Cologne. <laughs> Read <laughs> out of it. Mute yourself. Wait, wait, Mute up. What are you eating that, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can still taste it on my never mind. <laughs> wow. I love it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so, so, come on in, come on in. Uh, so y'all not gonna go, y'all gonna see who wins. Oh, okay. Oh, oh we're wait, still wait. in it. So, A apples, B berries, C cherries, D dill pickles, E eggplant, F Fiji apples, G guava. H hippopotamus meat. That's crazy. That's <laughs> it's, it's indigenous to uh, um, Tanzania. That wow. sounds big. Are you, you, you give me a region. <laughs> Go on. Uh, a applesauce. B berries. C cherries. D dill pickle. E eggplant. F Fiji apple. G guava H hippopotamus meat I ice cream <laughs> all, that hip, all that hippo meat okay uh in the sake of time we will now be instituting the time rule you have five seconds uh to for each letter continue what okay for each, for each letter oh like when you name a new one mm -hmm. okay. A applesauce, B berries, C cherries, D dill pickles, E eggplant, F Fiji apples, G guava, H hippopotamus meat, I ice cream, J jungle juice. Okay, Jack. A applesauce, B berries, C cherries, D dill pickle. E, eggplant, F, Fiji, apple, G, guava, H, hippopotamus meat, I, ice cream, J, jungle juice, K, A, Kraft mac and cheese. Woo! Oh, okay. New rule. When you say them, you have to close your eyes because it looked like Jack was reading. Yo, go can, on. Your Kraft no, mac and cheese is not K. Yes, it is. Yes, Bruh. Applebee's, Apple, Applebee's uh, spinach artichoke dip now. That's what we doing. Like, that's how we feel. Talking about I mean, Cheesecake Factory. Uh, okay, James, Cheesecake listen, we're, Factory. In a, James, we're in a very Wait. important round. Wendell, close your eyes. Go James, ahead. if you were still in, you could say whatever hey, you Apple, want. Uh, Bryce, they're messing me up. Hey, and, hey, hey, and hey. I, and I can't see your hand count with my eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your hands up. Jam, hey, applesauce. B, berries. C cherries, D dill pickles, F Fiji apples, G guava, H hippopotamus meat, I ice cream, J jungle juice, K Kraft mac and cheese, L lollipops. 
A, apples. B, berries. C, cherries. D, dill pickle. E, eggplant. F, Fiji apple. G, guava. H, hippopotamus meat. I, ice cream. J, jungle juice. K, Kraft mac and cheese. L, lollipops. M, me. <laughs> Did you say me or meat? Meat. He said oh, this meat. is this is the, uh, the price. <laughs> this is a questionable um pod today. A applesauce. B berries. C cherries. D dill pickles. E eggplant. F Fiji apples. G guava. H hippopotamus meat. I ice cream. J jungle juice. K Kraft mac and cheese. L, lollipops. M, meat. N, Nantucket nectars. <laughs> A, applesauce. B, berries. C, cherries. D, dill pickles. E, eggplant. F, Fiji apple. G, guava. H, Four, two, three, four. Wait, wait, hey, hey, hey. Hippopotamus meat, baby. Oh, that needed to end anyway. I threw the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, back to the challenge. Surround it up. The ten minutes. We have uh, Kenzie winning um, for the purple group. Beast. Or, I'm sorry, the orange group. And then we have uh, Maria winning for the purple group, which uh, secured her group uh, some a food reward and a guaranteed spot on the jury. Can we talk about Dr. Maria real quick, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like solid, 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 solid player. For her to win this immunity, uh, even her conversation, I feel like when she was talking to Venus, uh, like and she was like, I'm leaving it open. Uh, and I don't like to feel pressure. Like, I don't know. Like, I just feel like winner edit. Uh, I definitely can see the climax of a Dr. Maria. I feel like we've seen her in the tribe challenges struggle a little bit, like, you know, being hard on herself, but I definitely feel like she showed up here and uh, I'm just team Dr. Maria. She showed up. She's strong. She was locked in. She did it. Um, and then, yeah, we could talk about her talking to um, her conversations afterwards. I also feel like, and again, we were talking about Tevin, and again, this is kind of like back and forth with Soda gone. Uh, and then you see how long Tevin lasted. You see Tevin pulled the, the hat trick on the thing. Uh, so it's not only does like Tevin have this big personality, not only does Tevin waver this power around, not only can Tevin sing, not only can Tevin almost fall off and say like, it's like not you a meat shield, not you the personality meat shield. Like I like, I'm getting worried for my twin out there in a very good way. Like I, I thought Tevin was a great player already, but to actually see how great he actually is, shout out to Caitlin Moore, the cast and director that casted me and casted Tevin because baby. He might be too great. That's a problem I'm willing to have. <laughs> Caleb was too great. Who? Caleb. I'm from Big Brother. Last season, Caleb, uh, he was just so friendly. So anyway, go on. You mean but, President I mean, Obama? D started catching some heat last season after around this time when she won this double tri tribe challenge. And everybody going to eat. Everybody going to eat. We're going to eat. Um, we go but, so, okay. So I guess we've wrapped up this challenge uh, and we can kind of start getting into the, the tribals here. We've already touched on them a little bit. Um, I guess let's start with just – the first camp, which in the first tribal, which is the um, the orange group, which is Tiffany, Kenzie, Q, Hunter, Tim, and Ben, uh, and there's obviously this this I guess once again like last episode, Yanu three ends up together in the same group, which gives them a lot of power, 
And I guess the debate here is between do they target Hunter uh, and take out a number from the group of Nami, or do they take out one of Tim or Ben and split up this stronger, maybe more closely knit Sega group? Uh, and they go back and forth. I mean, Q kind of jumps all over the place. Tim and Hunter are also allegedly part of this Journey 6 alliance, uh, but Tim isn't really willing to cut Ben because he's sort of his number one. Uh, this seems like a, a group that could have all six of them worked together in a, in a bigger merge setting. So it is tough for them where, you know, it's all people that they like and that they get along with. So now they have to choose someone. But from Yanni's perspective, guys, do we think that going Tim was the right move? And like what sort of stood out, stood, stuck out in the dynamics of this group? I don't know if it's the right move uh, because I don't want to see Tim gone, but I definitely noticed the Q urgency uh, to want to get Tim out. Uh, again, identifying Tim and after seeing that back and forth, but again, it just makes me think to what James said, like, you do want to be careful about when you want to get these threats out because if when Tim is gone now, I feel like it only kind of super heightens uh, Q's threat level because Q and Tim were both six two. I don't think I don't think that illuminates a Q. I think what this does, I think you had the um, Green Sega. There were four of them remaining, right? Or three? Four. four. Now I think. Three. Now there's three. I think we've watched this group that was so tight and tight-lipped and not willing to say or share anything when you cross that merge. And now is the time to start being a little more lenient. Can, can I ask you all a question? Sure. I don't need to finish. Per K. Oh, no. My, my bad. You took a, and uh, My apologies. If this like like how I want to look at these tribals is if, they, if these groups went to tribal again, like treat these groups like small tribes. Who would be in trouble next tribal? Think about that from a voting perspective. And then think about what was the right vote. Or could have been the right vote or a better vote. If they go again, I think that Ben, I think they would vote Ben. Well, who do but you think? I don't really factor that in because you know this is also a one-off. So you just have to worry about getting through this rather than the long-term tribe dynamics. You know? No, no, not, not from – but from positioning-wise, I think what we saw on the show is that you had Kenzie in position where she has Tiff. Now Kenzie has brought in Ben, right? So now Ben has that. Now they built some credibility with Hunter, right? Kenzie so, and Ben. P well, Kenzie we, we, Kenzie is building a bond with Ben. Ben loses Tim, right? So now Ben Kenzie is getting kind of like a pseudo plus one e type right now, you know, to add to her, you know, Yandu numbers, right? You know, the, these are the no, things that no. It, no. No, because they're coming back to each other, and Ben's going right back to Charlie and Maria. Right? That's Charlie and Maria. That's not a majority. And, That's not a majority. But but it, it is in the sense if you think about the plus one alliance, because now it seems like Q, you target the plus one alliance. So now you have to think there's Hunter, there's Tevin, there's Dr. Maria, there's, of course, Ben and yeah, Charlie. The plus one alliance is not really a thing anymore. But it's not really a thing. But when they come back and I, I would imagine what, that we, what what happened? And what's an it, excuse? You need an excuse. What's the excuse to go after Q? Right? Think like from a that's what I, that's you, what I'm saying. That, and, and what you from a number standpoint is kind of like okay, we have Q has to go sometime, right? So I guess like Q goes seven. Go, well, I, I can see it being no. go to the end with Q. Q doesn't have to I, go sometime. I, I, I don't. Go to the end with. Sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, I feel what you're saying. I just don't think the like the like the way Survivor is set up that you know like Q. It reminds me a little bit of Austin in the sense that you have a tight alliance and you're a bigger, kind of stronger, more. But that personality where you're the person that everybody sees as dictating or has the illusion of dictating, and you propose the big this big six, and then you take out my number one, right? Does Kenzie feel heard by Q all the time? Do you see Kenzie and Tiff talking? I'm looking at the seeds being led, where if you're going to have to choose to get rid of somebody because someone has to go, right, then I think when you're taking out, you know, when you're giving Ben opportunity to go back with Maria in, that's three right there. You only need six. It's ten people, right? You got three there, right? 
Now you're definitely not a, you got no fans over in Namdi. I mean, you may have some fans there, but you 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 kind of don't, you know. So at the end of the day, I mean, I think Q has to make sure he's still building his relationship to keep himself insulated, and he's been insulated these past two votes by being immune, but then also by with his, with the rock draw. So it's easy to make decisions when you're in the dictate when you are kind of insulated, right? Now, when you're not insulated, it's a whole different story out there when everybody is fair game and you only need six. So what I'm saying is in this group, I feel like the dynamic is different now where I feel like Ben can link up and Q, T Kenzie and Tiff have more options now. I... Okay, so I must have uh, like not seen him building with Kenzie, but I believe you absolutely. Um, I just think that – I think he's – I think he could either be now so um, frazzled that he does like start looking for these other inroads, yeah, or I think he can go back to the to the three remaining um, remaining Seagas. But what I was – I think what I was trying to say earlier was that like – this group has now been shaken, almost decimated, right? Now it's like, all right, do we even need to keep cracking them right now? Or now is it time for to start looking towards the Namis, right? I mean, I mean when are they going to get some Yanu blood? I mean, at some they're point, people will come to you. They're floating, man. They're chilling, floating. And they say, mention the Tika 3. You think they're going to let the purple people with 3 go far? Did they mention the Tika 3? Yes, someone mentioned that in confessionals. Like, no, nah, I'm not in these Yandu people go. It's like these are like you had to un, like, bro. So who's who? So who are they cutting? I, Q. I, I think Q got, got the least Q. connections right now. Because yeah, and it's like yeah, now you've cut Ben's number one, and I, we know Ben is a rock star. If somebody like takes out his lead bass player, <laughs> you think Ben's gonna let that rock? Like, no, Ben wants some blood. Charlie wants Q. As Charlie as wants Q. Char Charlie already admitted that. Maria's rocking with Charlie. That's three, right? Ben. Ben. Venus will write down anybody. That's I four. I think he's in, in trouble pretty soon. I mean, I, yeah, Venus will write down anybody. That's four, right? Okay. Liz Venus. don't care about no Q. She she got that money. That's five, right? All right. Now, if the <laughs> other now the other six is solid, that's great, right? Or will they say this is the opportunity to improve my my game? Have my five going into nine, and we still have a majority. I'm on board. I I agree with y'all. I think Q is um, I think that's a that's an easy one. Sometimes but that's too. an easy one, right? Like I agree with you because, but then also if Q is gone, then that illuminates a lot of other things. So I there is a case the, that the, the threat Mechamo, like it's gonna be the big like oh Q's gone. All right, maybe Hunter, then the then the Tevin. Like the way the way the people left are. You have a Liz. You have a little smaller in stature. Dr. Maria is smaller. The sm Tiff, Kenzie, they're chilling, right? And now when you start taking out the big, quote-unquote, big personality, all the, those guys that were in the, that, that Muni challenge, right, start taking those guys, Tim, now they're going to start form a new majority. And that's kind of how the new era has been going. What I was thinking, um, <clears throat> I was thinking before y'all, you kind of swayed my opinion, but now I'm swaying back. A Q and a Hunter – I don't see as the big threats on this season. I see them as big people, right? I see the big threats as those people sitting back strategizing. Like the, the and, and, and I see those people looking at the big threats that are the big social people. Okay. So when, when I think of a Q and a Hunter, I feel like some people aren't even worried about them, similar to how some people weren't even really worried about Jonathan, similar to how some people weren't even worried about Xander. I feel like they're just like the only difference with the only difference with Q's game is that Q has been focal with right. trying to articulate and create Bruce. votes, right? He's, he's a As similar game to, to like Bruce. And, and, and he's and, sitting at the end trying to vocalize that with anybody, I still think they got him. Well, yeah, I don't think he has a lot of winner's stock. The problem, it's, he's just harder to pull to the end because it's like Q's, it's like Q's way or the highway. So that's that's a harder person to just take with. And you. people want to feel like they have agency right. playing the game. Like, so even if their agency is a bad move, 
right? You know, like I think my vote on was a bad move, but people wanted to have agency, right? People that want to play the game want to have agency. So if you come to Venus, like, oh, you want to have some agency? You want to take out Q? What do you think she's going to say? That's what I've been saying the whole time. Something like that. Like, you know, people that may not have had as much influence, like, oh, you want to make this move? Okay, cool. Let's 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 play. Now I don't want you to go home. I don't I, I don't I don't and want that to happen. I just feel like when you start eliminating people like yourself or that are considered from Will um, Tim was considered a strategist. Q considers himself a strategist, considers him running people probably thought Tim was in a dominant position in his tribe. People probably think Q's a dominant position in his tribe. So when you make that target within your season, that archaeotype, that's that that archaeotype within the season, what a threat is, they start going. You start seeing that happen most of the time. And so, do you want to go to the end with a Q? Say what you want, but we know he can spin a story. We know his backstory of his family. Like, you get Q in that hot seat, and you as the jury, you might be, like, and say that's Q's threat level. Like, right. Q's threat level is, like, you don't want to sit next to Q. He can talk. He's not afraid to talk. I, 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 he's willing I to go at you. If I, was, if, I was, if I was, I think he's appealing to sit next to him. Like, like at sitting next to him, what's your argument? Like, homeboy's delusional or homeboy didn't didn't talk to you? Well, I, I think it's a situation. Yeah, I think he is a little, as far as the game goes, a little delusional. And so, if you're if you come in ready to counter a lot of his arguments, and you're gonna you're gonna leave him really flustered, I think, where he's gonna be like, oh, I control this, just because. But it's like he, he's so upfront about things. If you're doing some stuff, he's got receipts right now. But also, he's, people are gonna sit on that jury. Like, man, I don't love how he talked to me. Like, yeah. But I don't want to vote for that guy. And, but you don't know how the jury's gonna vote. Sometimes. Jury sometimes be jury. Respect. Like, you never. But we have seen people think, get rubbed the wrong way by Q. Like at this point, I don't think Charlie sees Q as a a, and, a good and, winner. And Gabler put that. pawn fronds on people while they were asleep, and he still got the million dollars. You don't know what these juries are going yeah, to do. I think that it's almost a testament to the fact that Gabler was. I guess compassionate, and also that was more about a fact of a lot of people not wanting to vote for Cassidy and not not wanting to vote for Owen. So a lot of times, especially in the new era, the people that win can be a product of being the 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 per, the person that they be sitting next to people that the jurors don't want to vote for. And I think there's going to be a lot of jurors that don't want to vote for Q. I can't see really like a Venus but, wanting to vote for Q. I don't see a Charlie can, wanting to vote for Q. I don't even really see like a Kenzie wanting to vote for Q. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I feel like uh, I feel like Kenzie's gonna make a move on Q. She would have did it now. I feel like you know. I feel like Kenzie's fine with Q. I feel like sometimes when you you, you don't see the human moments out there, sometimes and a person like Q, to, he's probably that dynamic because he is having those non-dynamic moments as well. Like you can have like I remember when me and Cass got into the argument about voting a girl off. Everybody was like, James, you're talking down to Cass, but they didn't know me and Cass were like tight buddies since day one. Like. We had a great rapport, and she felt confident enough to communicate to me in that way that I wasn't going to take it that way. And that was a sign of how tight we were on the island. So I just think Q, from a player's perspective and looking at the players in the game, they don't want to sit next to a Q or a Tevin. These people are, have dynamic personalities and can communicate very well, like a jam jam. Like, like, you, they, they, like that becomes the more threatening than a Liz, right? Then a Venus, and then when the game switches from okay, what's more threatening to my game and winning is like is Venus more threatening than and this is what people start thinking. Who you want, is Venus more threatening than Q or Q or uh, Tevin? Nope. And then wow. your, the alliances and your allegiances then change because you start looking at it from well, yeah. Look, for the sake of time, I don't want to get too into like the weeds on it, but I do. I'm just saying I, I think I align a little bit more with Wendell in that I don't think Q is a huge threat to win. But I do agree that I, I think he will probably go pretty soon because he's such an assertive force that it's like even if you're happy to go to the end with him, you're going to have to do that under Q's plan. So if, he's just kind of a hard person to work with. Um, Similar to Chris Noble. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, okay, yeah, really yeah. Though, I am dead. Sorry. In the last podcast, somebody in the comments said one thing Wendell going to do is bring up Chris Noble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. That's why I did it. That's why I did it. <laughs> but okay, um, okay. That's so, why I did it. <laughs> so they do go. They do go. Tim. Uh, I think for me, I think the lesson to be learned at both of these tribals. I feel like 
more so for the um, soda vote than the Tim vote. But I feel like people sort of made a move to make a move. I think they decided to keep the devil they know rather than the devil they don't, which would be not that bad, not bad necessarily being the devil they know, but they, they had people that they were working with like a Tim and a soda who were also, you know, kind of playing an independent game. But I ultimately think Tim had a lot of loyalty to this Yanu group. And I think that soda had a lot of loyalty to Tevin and Liz and Hunter. And I think they made a move because they didn't want, you know, allies going and, doing other things you know they, they're like okay we know where venus is at she's not with us but she's not really with anybody uh but ultimately i i, I don't really love either of these moves because i think you you keep your your numbers even if the numbers aren't 100 percent with you those are options for you rather than keep getting rid of some options that you're not sure where they're at but keeping options that you know aren't really with you um but the question i i wanted to wrap up this tribal is Hunter, you know, goes into this tribal with an idol. I think it's very easy, given how it played out, to say, okay, great, he didn't play his idol. But I was definitely thinking in the moment, I'm like, hey, you know it's either going to be you or a Sega. And I think there's an added element of, like, this determines whether you make the jury or not. And, you know, that might be small, but I think I'd be really tempted to be like, okay, if it's me or someone else, maybe I think it's more likely going to be Tim but maybe I just play it, secure my spot in the final 10 and a spot in the jury, uh, which, you know, you obviously want to play to win, but making the jury is, is a big step and also helps your chances to even come back in a future season, just being able to sit on the jury. So uh, do, do we think Hunter, of, of course, he ultimately made the right decision, but in the moment where you guys thinking, hey, you should play his idol or you should hold it. I, I feel like if he plays his idol this round, he probably goes home next round. From a from a from a from a from a standpoint of like you didn't raise your level that you had this idol, you don't need the idol, so you played the idol wrong, right? Or quote unquote wrong, even though I'm not opposed to just playing the idol, right? You you build trust with people, and if and if you're not getting it past this vote, you're not getting past next vote, right? So if they if, if on this small tribe, everybody's like, yo, we try and vote you out, use your idol, get through it, you know, that means yeah. everybody from this tribal trying to vote you out and use your idol to save you and you may you get back to your people but you're still now the target is on you so people are going to be like okay what's the easy vote and, and he falls in the easy vote territory i feel like his gamble is saying if i'm he's here to play to win the game and if i can't get past this vote i can't win this game and if i get past this vote you know then i have my idol and then that enhances my chance of winning this game but so I agree with the sentiment of, like, you're playing to win, right? So the, the gamble here is, like – but I do think this is a unique circumstance where he's in this – the tribes are divided up. If He he might not be able to get past this vote because the groups are split up, but if he saves himself here and then wow. gets back to all his allies, all the nommies on the other side, absolutely you can still reposition yourself and be all right. No, you, but I do you, think you, the you, argument is also he might play the idol and it keeps him safe, but maybe that shows the Yanus that he's now trying to work with. Hey, I don't fully trust you. So that's another added element. But I still think it's a very good case to play the idol and then make sure you get to back to that cool. final ten and back to your Nami people and then I think a reposition. Sat in his basement many a hours, a many a days with a fake idol in his pocket, like practicing what to do. And I feel like it paid off. And like I said before, uh, in order to win Survivor, you have to play to win. And I think that showed that right here, right? Uh, him not playing it is a huge move. It's more beneficial for him moving forward than him pulling his idol out and playing it tonight. So I definitely think for me, it has raised my watch level on my Hunter. And again... <laughs> I'm Hunter turning, is a Survivor fan. Yeah, and I'm turning into a whoo dove, and it's dove season, Hunter. So come find me. Whoo. Yeah, I do think that maybe this Yanu group is pretty like with Q at the at the helm. I feel like Hunter probably did get a good sense that he was probably safe because Q feels like a pretty straightforward person. Uh, so with that read in mind, I definitely think. It's great that he was able to hold the idol, but yeah, I mean, I definitely think it's it would have been tough to to hold that when you know it's either going to be you or a Sega. 
Yeah. It'll be fun to see when Q has to really start lying in the game. I mean, we've seen him uh, in the confessionals, whether he's lying or telling the truth. <laughs> but uh, but also to Hunter, real quick, uh, Bryce, to your Hunter. Um, he got through with an idol. Mm -hmm. He's very strong. He can win some immunities. Mm -hmm. He has great alliances. Mm -hmm. This is one of those people we should watch out for. Uh, that <laughs> Especially with so many other types of threats being in the game. Watch yes. out. Yes, this is what I, I, I love to tell Wendell why I like his season two is that he like if Wendell played in the new era, right? Just from a physicality personality standpoint. Well, he, did. We saw him. <laughs> he would be a person that would be considered a standout, a physical threat, super social. But then but Wendell season he had a C bass. He had him he had a mic. He had he oh. had he had these he had Chris these Noble. Chris Noble, you had these big personalities who were also athletic who were kind of like Wendell. So Wendell didn't just be the 6'2 person that he is. Like, like if Wendell six play two. in a new 6'4 if you're doing survivor stats. Thank you. <laughs> if, so and that's why it's so important to look at the people you're with and for Hunter to have a Q, a Tevin, even like just people that are similar. Not say they're equals or XYZ, but just similar from a and Tevin being your 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 social shield and, and partner, I think that gives you a couple of votes with the idol. So that gives you three votes. You only have to get the four from six, right? And so when in immunity, you build immunities. Shall you know, so I feel like that's the thing we are looking at in the game now. Is it's very a lot shorter than people think it really is. Where you have these first two votes, you no get the Tim. ten. What happened? You said it's a lot shorter than what people say it is. I said no, Tim. <laughs> yo, that's crazy, yo. If that becomes a survivor <laughs> thing, like no, Tim, I feel like Tim. Tim should give you a fair one if that becomes a survivor thing. Little. People will be like, if that becomes a new no cap, like, yeah, yo, I'm out here killing the challenges. No, Tim. No, no, Tim. But, <laughs> no, no, cap, no cap is no, is no Q. <laughs> yo, no, no, no cap. No, Tim. No, 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 Q, Tim no Tim. Like, I got, I got ups on the basketball court. No Tim. no Tim. No Tim. Oh, bro. It's Yo, so like funny. Survivor Why are you right? trying to go on Survivor? Like, this isn't Tinder. You could, you could no be Tim. Honest. I don't think they care. <laughs> No, I mean, it, it, they they do like they, they want to make sure teams are as equal as possible. You know, like they they're trying to figure those things out. But not no, 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 round no. down so that they give you bigger people with your with your team. No, let me tell you, you want to know some some behind the scenes there stuff. They thought I was super fat, yo, and that's why I was on. <laughs> they thought I was super duper big based on my my size weight proportions because I was like what five eight two twenty. So like if you look at you look up a five eight two twenty <laughs> person like. Yeah, it ain't not looking like Tim, in the Tim rounding at the title floor. makes him seem like he's going to be stronger in challenges, so they're going to give him weaker tribe mates. So, what did the strategy be? Maybe round down your height. They think you're going to be worse at challenges than you are. They're going to make your challenge, your tribe stronger. Tim you're about to say I'm, 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 like, say I'm five nine. I like. No, nah, Jack, bro, you're going to be at the sink. If you ever get on the show, you're going to have to be the person they look to. You have to be the the strong person on your tribe, yo. Not if I say I'm, like a, I don't know if I say I'm five ten. <laughs> Oh, oh, they gonna know it's you. They gonna they be like, oh, you, oh, oh, you put that physical in, but no, um, I, no Linsky. <laughs> but nah, man, uh, I'm I'm excited for this second half, and um, yes. I think Hunter is is doing the best Austin impression he can do with trying to be as non-threatening as possible, but still be an athletic threat, which I think is easy when you have a social butterfly as your number one. Like I feel like. That is how you 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 really position yourself if you're positioning in this game. So I, yeah. I'm, and I feel like that's just kind of, you know, what, where things stand. And the question is, where is the next six, and where is the next majority group going to form? And I'm excited yeah. to see well, it. Before we get into that, I mean, we still have one more vote to cover real quick. We have the the uh -huh. other beach, um, and we could, we already touched on it a lot, but we could keep it. Ultimately, they blindside Soda. Tevin votes with Soda for Venus. And Venus sort of takes responsibility for this. But do we think that voting soda was, I mean, I guess you could say the people in power here were like kind of like a Tevin. I guess you could say a Maria and a Charlie. Was this the right <laughs> move here on this? For Maria and Charlie, yes. Can I ask y'all a question? I mean, because sure. I, I watched the episode. I, like, we're, we're 100% sure Tevin was understood what was happening with the vote. 
I'm just, if, question. I think that's a good question, James, because I was like, all right, Tevin's ready to get busy. Because I mean, the reason why you would vote for a Venus is to make it seem like you're out, you're on the outs to a Venus, right? Like to make her comfortable for a, the next vote with some type of deal. Now, so I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I want to give credit, credit to Tevin's game because I feel like he's playing a phenomenal game. So it's definitely a nice move to, to if you like D. I think D did this a couple of times last year. It's fine to be on the wrong side of the quote unquote wrong side of the vote if you know where the votes are going to lower your threat level and your stock within the groups. Like, even if you want to let the other group know you, like, I just, but it'll be good to know based on the way the edit was that if there would be good to have an edit saying these four are going to vote here and me and yeah. Soda are going to do here and Soda's going to go home or something to give me that type of insight. That this will feel more I bet comfortable. next episode they'll say, maybe he'll say, like, I voted with Soda because I want her to go to the jury, you know, have, but I do sometimes think that's where people will do a little too much because if I'm, say I'm a Liz, say I'm a Liz and I say Tevin orchestrated this vote, but then he voted with Soda, like the first member of the jury, it seems like you're, that's, he, that's something that could really raise his level. What if he lies? But, I mean, that, that could work, but you're still, he, he might, but it, we'll it's, still, it's still Dep a little bit uh No matter what, however he comes clean or if they saw he lied or whatever, it's going to up his threat level. Even if he told them, yo, I'm exactly. going to still vote with Soda, it's going to up his threat level. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, so I think you just I, vote with Soda. You just, Tevin, you just dropped, and I love you, Tevin, you know this, but from my perspective, and I, we don't see what happens out there. We see the edit. But it looks like you just dropped a bomb on your, on one other option of alliances for you. A little early. That's what it looks like from an outsider's yeah. perspective. And it's going to up his threat level. I don't think he's as in trouble as, like, for other reasons, as you guys said earlier. But I do think this situation where he's almost making, like, too good of a move, but it's the final 12. So you don't you don't need to do that quite yet. You could just yeah. kind of go with the 12. Like I, like I said, it's, it's tough. Everybody, because they're casting, like, people that want to play the game, it's very tough to – to do what a jam jam did like to to really just roll with it when you do have the power like when jam jam had the ability to blow up the whole like idol play xyz having that pipe power to know that and want to do something especially if you've been losing <laughs> is a lot and to be able to have that restraint to not do something is the new superpower i think a survivor is to take that information and and have restraint and be able to then let the chips fall where they fall, because that's how the winners are are winning nowadays. You know, yeah. you make your moves when you have to, not because exactly. you want to. And, and, and power, good call, James. You know, so I do think Soda like has shown that maybe Tevin is her number one, right? And so Tevin is, has every right to be worried about Soda down the line, but it's like, why not just get rid of a Venus who's shown that she just doesn't really rock with you? over someone who could be a really valuable asset for you. It's like, sure, Soda's playing a, a social game, but, I mean, even the fact that you're the one in control of this vote probably should show to you that you do have more uh, control and agency than Soda does. So maybe you don't have to be as worried as it seems like you was. But and, I still, and, I'm still high on Tevin, though. So. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm high on Tevin, and that's just something to think about when, when you are playing, like, the game. If you do go out there, is that – like, because you just because you can make a vote doesn't mean you should make a vote. Yeah. And uh, and kind of just thinking about that in the sense of, yeah, you know. One last note. I said that um, that how they flashed to Tevin and he was like, nah, that's my move. At the end, he didn't really say too much. That could also, I said that that could be what leads to him like claiming the move and getting voted out. That could also be, what leads to him sitting at the end and flashing back to that move. Hey, Soda, that was my move. I put yeah. you on the jury. I voted with you. And you're about to get all of these jurors to vote for me to win this game. Until they yeah, go back to the jury and spoil that story. Until you get the Ponderosa. I, I would be surprised if he claimed it because then it's like, well, then why even bother voting with Soda, right? If you're going to claim it in front of everybody. Uh, so I, I'm more on with you, Wendell, on like that other option of, letting Venus take this ownership and secretly be like, all right, me and my people, we, we know it was us, but Venus could go, think she's 
in the hot, like in the in the driver's seat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think Tevin's got a lot of game to bring. I thought this was a little bit early, but I'd I, I like seeing Tevin like play hard and and do some really creative, uh, some really creative stuff. And it feels like yeah, just to to put a pin in it. Now it feels like the season's starting to ramp up a little bit. I thought this was the best episode of the season, and now I think we have a lot of strong players, a lot of strong alliances left in the game. And, you know, with the benefit of the 90 minutes is all these players have a little bit more of a story. So it's going to be more impactful as they start to go out. Um, and I think there's a lot of players who could, who could potentially take it home, which is exciting. Last two question. question. Two gut punches with those vote outs, by the way. On the rewatch, like, I was teary-eyed for both of them. I mean, I don't cry for people getting voted out. However, what I will say is, Jack, I like what you said, that everybody has a chance to win. Which I said, which I say about threats in general, everybody in this final ten has a path towards winning. Uh, well, don't yeah. that's, that's that, 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 that's James is right. That's right. Look, James is right. Though. Everyone has a path to winning, and what everyone does have a path to is, uh, in my opinion. <laughs> a chance to see us live in Chicago on April 22nd. The Bryce and Wynn Tour 46 uh, is coming to Chicago. We'll be in Boston May 8th. We'll be in Philadelphia May 15th. And the grand finale is in New York May 22nd. Make sure you get your tickets to the Bryce and Wynn Tour 46. Uh, it's definitely been a grand old tour de door 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 thus far. Uh, Philadelphia May 15th. And shout out to Pittsburgh. We had a time over there in Pittsburgh. Uh, we can't thank James Jones, Wendell Holland, and Jack Atkins enough. This has been this week's Survivor News. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening. Survivor News. 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 Dot, dot, dot.